Because uh, this morning in my quiet time, the Lord really touched me and, and brought a verse to me that I wanted to share with you. It's Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4. Uh, God's Word says, in referencing a wife, that an excellent wife is a crown to her husband. And I want to ask you as we begin our study and we look at Eve, the first wife, how that sits with you and, and, and whether or not you're at peace with the thought that God has called you to be a crown to your husband. Now in that same verse, God's Word says that by contrast, a wife that is shameful or a wife that ashames her husband is as a rottenness in his bones. Literally says that in the Hebrew, a rottenness in his bones. And so I want to ask you as we begin our study and you begin to look at Eve and, and prayerfully look at yourself. If you're a wife, then I ask you, can you say with peace that you are a crown to your husband? Because again, the Bible says an excellent wife, a wife of high or noble character is a crown to her husband. I want you to think about this and, and take some time this week and not just read the book by MacArthur. Don't just read about Eve and MacArthur, but go into God's Word. And I ask you to spend some time in Ephesians 5. Pray and ask God, how does His Word, how do His instructions sit with you? When, when you understand that you're told as a wife that you are to be submissive to your husband as the church is submissive to Christ. There again in Ephesians 5, and, and don't get caught up looking at what the husband's role is, because our job is to be who God has called us to be. And you'll see, in fact, in 1 Peter, in just a minute, that in in the event that your husband is the total opposite of who God has called him to be, that's no excuse because your living example, your walking with Christ, may be the very means by which God turns his heart around. God may grab your husband's heart in part or in whole based on your walk with the King, your Christ-likeness. I want to also just point out again that in Ephesians chapter 5, when God is speaking to our wives, to you ladies, what he says is that you are to respect your husband. And I ask you to take some time to pray and to dig and to go into God's Word and find out what, what does an excellent wife look like. Let me read to you 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 1 through 5. It says to us wives, be submissive to your husbands so that in any, if any of them do not believe the word of God, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. That if you say, but my husband isn't worthy of my submission, my husband isn't worthy of being treated with the respect that he wants and the Bible tells me that I should give. Remember, we're not the judge or the jury. We're servants. We're slaves. We say, yes, Lord. Let me pick up here in verse 3. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth in God's sight. Do you hear that? That your gentle spirit is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands. I want to also send you to Proverbs chapter 31. Pick up in verse 10 and read through the rest of the book. The rest of that chapter closes out Proverbs. What you'll see is that there's an awful lot said about what an excellent wife looks like. Pay attention to what it says in regards to your everyday life and especially as a wife. Um, Eve is going to be explained in ways that I suspect many of us have never seen before as we go through MacArthur's chapter one. Uh, I want you to remember this and, and uh, share this with your husbands as well. Eve was 
not only the first wife, but she was the crown jewel of God's creation. The last thing, the last person, the last aspect of God's creation was Eve. Think about this, uh, Adam, as MacArthur tells us, was refined dirt, whereas Eve was refined humanity. Proverbs 31 will also tell you, uh, and you share this with your husbands as well, that an excellent wife is worth more than jewels, worth more than jewels. I pray that you will see that while the world may tell you that this pursuit to become a biblically God-honoring, Christ-like wife may not fit well with the world's standards, that it is not only well worth the pursuit of your life, but you will live with God's blessing on you as you submit to his standards, as you live out the call to be who he has called you to be. In part, that's an excellent wife, an excellent wife by God's standards. I promise you, no matter what anybody else says, that when you are who God has called you to be, you will live with his blessing on you. I pray that blesses you, and I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.